free, we're, a, we're a free people in Christ this yes. morning. Uh, God does not want us to be bound up uh, by problems and issues and, and addictions and lusts. And He doesn't want us uh, to be prisoners of, of all these terrible things that afflict uh, human beings. Amen? Amen? And so I believe that blood has purchased for us freedom as human beings. Amen? And as His children. And, and we're supposed to, I think we're supposed to be free people. Free. Amen? All right, this morning we're going to talk about something I think is very important. This came to me last week. I really hadn't planned on this as part of this, but it came to me last week. Sometimes we presume people understand certain things, uh, often in ministry, but we, we have to uh, uh, sometimes pause and think, well, maybe there's people that need a refresher. Maybe there's people that have not ever heard uh, some of the uh, good news of the gospel. Amen. And uh, this morning I want to talk to you about overcoming temptation. Amen. If there's any tool uh, that you have in your toolbox, spiritually speaking, it ought to be the ability to overcome temptation. Yes. Because we're all going to experience temptation. That's the primary way that the enemy works against us is to tempt us into sinning. Yes. Amen. Thought, word, or deed, he's, he, he's, he, he tempts. Uh, he's a tempter. He's, a, he's the one that's going to come to us just like he did to Adam and Eve in that garden. Just like he did to Jesus when he was in that wilderness. Mm -hmm. He's going to try to find ways that we saw last week in, in uh, Ephesians 6 and 11. Uh, he has wiles. He has schemes. Uh, uh, 2 Corinthians 2 and verse 11. He has um, devices. The devil does. And so he wants to, he wants to defeat us spiritually. He wants, to, he wants to either uh, keep you from being saved or neutralize you once you get saved, uh, make your spiritual life one that uh, is lacking. Okay? Uh, the thief doesn't come except to steal, kill, and to destroy. And thank God Jesus has come to give us life and to give us that more abundantly. Amen? Amen. All right, let's turn in our Bibles to the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 10. 1 Corinthians chapter 10. I'm going to drop some truth on you here this morning. There's three primary things I, I believe the Lord wants me to say to you today about overcoming temptation. But in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, we'll start at verse 12. And now he goes through initially here in this chapter, he talks about the, the temptations that came upon the children of Israel and how they fell to them. How ruined and wrecked uh, basically an entire nation. And he says, Therefore, let him who thinks he stands take heed lest he fall. So we've got to be careful we don't get prideful in our spirituality. You may have been saved 50 years, but you still need to be careful. You still, you still need to walk carefully. You still need to be alert and, and vigilant that there's an enemy that can tempt you. Verse 13. No temptation has overtaken you except such as is common to man. But God is faithful who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able, but with the temptation will also make the way of escape that you may be able to bear it or endure it. The grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of the Lord stands forever. Amen. First of all, let's take note that temptation is common to all men, to all people. Everybody, all God's people, and that's who he's talking to here, will undergo temptation. You and I are going to undergo temptations. They're going to come to us. If, if we know that to be a truth, if we know that that's a reality, then what we, we should be doing is building a defense. We, we, need, to, we need to have some, some uh, truth. We need to have the ability uh, that comes from that truth to endure when temptation comes to us. And so we so if we know it's inevitable, we ought to plan for it. Amen? Amen? We need to have a plan. 
There's three things I believe that the Lord has spoken to me that will help us in, in regards to overcoming temptation. The first is this. God is faithful. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. God is faithful. Now this is important. This is an important thing for us here today. This is the truth you need to embrace. You need to build this into your uh, heart, into your faith. Okay? God is a God who's always faithful. He's there for you. He's there with you. You do not go through life, and in particular, you're not going to go through your struggles. You're not going to go through the temptation alone. That's so. Somebody needs to hear that. Amen. God is with you. Yes, he is. He's faithful. Temptation comes. And when that temptation comes, one thing you need to know and, and, and rely on is God is with me. And He is faithful. And He will get me through this temptation no matter what it is. And if I fall, He's going to help me to get back up and keep going and overcome and get free from this thing. He is faithful. He's not going to let you down. As a matter of fact, he, he, he is intimately involved in your life. And, in, and listen, He knows what you're being tempted by. He knows what you're vulnerable to. He knows what you're susceptible to. He knows all about that. He's not lost. He, he doesn't, you know. And listen, here, here's, here's, the, here's the key to this is that He... He will get you through no matter what the temptation is. Notice what it says here. He's not going to let the devil do more to you than you can take. Anybody believe that? Amen. He will not allow you to go through more than what you can take, what you can deal with. He's faithful to do that. He's faithful to make the way of escape for you when you get into temptation. Okay? And we can break all that down, but here, here's, here's, here's really what it boils down to. God, listen, God gives you every opportunity, every way possible to endure temptation and not fall to sin. When we fall, when we sin, it's because we did not allow Him to help us through it. Amen. Let's just be honest about it now. Somehow, listen, it's, it's, he doesn't fail. He's faithful. Okay. Amen. And, and here's something we need to get. You've never been left. When you got saved from that time on, you've never been left to the mercy of Satan. No. Amen. Amen. Ever. You, you are never left at the mercy of Satan. Amen. And, and so, so that's good news for us. And so he's going to be there. If, if you adopt a, the, you know, a lot of folks just surrender. Okay, you know, people will say, well, the devil made me do it. The devil didn't make anybody do anything. Okay? People made a choice. If you're a believer, you made a choice. Amen. In the end, that's, what's going, that's what it's all going to look at. That's, what, that's how it's going to shake out. Uh, uh, what happens is people think that the devil has more power than, than he has. That, 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 that they're, what, what's happening, they can't resist. There's nothing they can do about it. They just fall and they just surrender and then they have, you know, and, and so that's why people have all these excuses and all these rationalizations about why they continue to sin even though they're believers. And God's merciful and God's a God of grace and He still loves us uh, when we fall, but we can never, ever, ever, uh, we can never make detente with sin. We can never say sin is okay in our life. It's not. Because God's faithful to get us through whatever our temptations are. And, and he, he makes a way of escape. Listen, there's always a way for you to avoid falling to temptation. There's always a way for you to get through it. There's always a way for you to overcome whatever the temptation is. There's always a way. Amen. He makes a way. And so we've got to believe that. And we've got to, we've got to stand on that. Amen. It's not hopeless. Your situation ain't hopeless. Modern, no matter what the addiction, the lust, no matter what the sin is, no matter, listen, you are not hopeless. God has a way for you. Your flesh does not have to prevail. The devil does not have to win. Amen. Amen. We can overcome. We can be faithful. I'm sorry, he's going to be faithful. And, and if we're faithful, 
to him. Okay, that's our responsibility. He'll get us through. So number one, God's faithful. You are not going to go through your temptation alone. Your struggles, he's going to be there for you. The second uh, truth, you have power to overcome. Amen. Let's look at Ephesians. We looked at this last week, but there's a couple of passages here in Ephesians, I think, that, that we should look at here in this regard. And I can quote this without even looking. You probably can too. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord. That's verse 10. Ephesians 6 and 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Put on the whole armor of God that you might be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. So I want us to take note of that this morning. Now we looked at that last week. That was our base text last week. But, but I want us to look at that again. Listen, you have available to you power. Somebody should have said, thank God, hallelujah, praise Amen. the Lord, son. A grunt. But you have available to you power to overcome. Amen. Amen. He goes on to talk about principalities and powers. Those are high up angelic demon creatures that rule over nations. Okay? But listen, we have power, obviously we have power that when we wrestle against those entities, you and I can prevail. We can overcome. But we don't overcome within ourselves. We don't overcome because we're smart enough. That was a whole lot smarter than you are. He's, a whole, he's, he's got thousands of years on you. Maybe more than that. We don't know how long he's been around. But, but he's, got, he's got knowledge. He's got wisdom. He's got understanding. He knows the plan of God better than you do. He knows the scripture better than you do. So we have to, we have to understand. He's powerful. And so, we need help. Now, last week I told you about authority. Remember little Officer Large? Mm -hmm. Who, because of her authority, she could throw her hand up and stop a semi-truck? Mm -hmm. Just based on authority? And, and I told you about how we have authority through the name of Jesus. We can, we can kind of throw our hand up in the Spirit and say, Devil, I bind you in the name of Jesus. Amen. You sis and decease this right now in Jesus' name. We need to have faith in the authority that Jesus has given us. But you know, we got more than just authority. You know, Officer Large also has a big old gun on her, on her hip. Mm -hmm. Amen? She's got some power to back up that authority. Now, you and I have power. Not just authority. We have power. When the devil comes around to tempt us, listen, and once again, we understand something. You know, he's stronger than us. He's wiser than us. He's a formidable foe. Okay? We don't come at him in our name. Or in a name we don't know. Or we'll, we'll be like the seven sons of Siva. He'll beat us up and leave us naked somewhere. I mean, just, yeah, uh, so to speak. Uh, figuratively, maybe. Hopefully. Uh, <laughs> but but <laughs> anyway, uh, uh, the devil's pretty powerful. He's pretty strong. He don't, he, know, he don't play games, and we ought not play games with him. Uh, but we've got power. You know, the, 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 word, the, the word power in the Bible uh, you have to kind of see what it, what the context is and know what it means. If it's if in the Greek, if it's exousia, that's authority. But sometimes the power, like where Jesus said, uh, the Holy Spirit will come upon you, and you have power to be witness. To me. That that word there's dunamis, and that's a word that we get our, our our word dynamite from. And so that's power that that that's not authority power; it's ability power. Okay. And and, and so I thought about it like this a long time ago. God's given me dunamis. Okay? Now when you see the early church, they faced a lot of enemies and lots of devils and that sort of thing. And they were a lot stronger than them. The religious hierarchy and religious structure was stronger than them. Governments had power over them. Uh, they had persecution and, and all sorts of problems. But you know what they would do? They would use their spiritual dynamite. Okay? So if an enemy's coming at me, I, I listen, that enemy may be a whole lot stronger than I am. That enemy may be more powerful than me. But if I've got something that will take them out, something beyond me, okay, let's just say I have dynamite. Okay? I can light the fuse and I can chunk that dynamite at them and blow them up. Amen? Amen? Spiritually, you've got devil blowing up power available to you. Amen? Amen. Amen. And so we need, to, we need to take that power that He's given to us and use it. Now you could say, hey, Brother Jesse, could you cut this tree down for me? And I'd say, yes. 
Now certainly you don't think I'm going to go out there with my bare hands and, and pick up a tree down, do you? I've got something I can use. I got a chainsaw. I got two chainsaws. All right? I got a chainsaw. I'll use a chainsaw to cut that tree down. All right? Now I can walk around with that chainsaw all day. So I got power to cut down trees, but until I put that chainsaw to that tree, it don't mean nothing. So you and I need the power of God. And, 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 and it's available to us. And we can use it. You've got to, when you get tempted, you need to start throwing some Holy Ghost hand grenades at the devil. Amen. Amen. Uh, speak to him in tongues. He don't like that. He runs off because he don't know what you're saying. And he knows God's up to something. And that you're speaking, uh, in one translation, spiritual secrets. Right. Divine Amen. secrets. Yeah. Amen. Amen. He ain't in on them. Yeah. All he knows is there's a rustling in the mulberry trees. And there must be some angels coming to your rescue. So he gets out of there. Mm -hmm. Is this too fanciful? Mm -hmm. I don't think so. Mm -hmm. I believe God's on. He, God's for us. Amen. Amen. And He gives us these tools. So, Amen. you know, speak the Word of God. The Word of God's a grenade that, that blows Him up. Amen. And so, uh, when, God, when, the, when the tempter comes, He starts tempting you. And He starts pulling you. And He starts drawing you into doing something that's, that, that is, is, is contrary to the will of God for your life. Come on. You've got, you got to rise up in spiritual power and overcome. And you can. And so let's, let's talk a little more about how we can use this power that He's given to us. Let's, let's look to Ephesians chapter 5 now. Just back up a block. And uh, Ephesians chapter 5 and verse number 15. This is the third thing that God uh, uh, speaks to us about overcoming temptation. And that is to avoid the danger zones. Avoid the danger zones. Ephesians 5 and verse 15. See then, uh, Paul says, now Paul's, Paul's given them a lot of uh, instructions here. But he says, see then that you walk circumspectly. That's just a fancy word that says walk carefully. That's, right, that's what my marginal reading here says, carefully. Mm -hmm. See then that you walk carefully, not as fools, but as wise. Redeeming the time, because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. And do not be drunk with wine in which is dissipation, but be filled with the Spirit. Amen. So, uh, let's talk about this. Uh, I don't know if y'all remember this, but just a few years ago when George, uh, I mean when uh, Mike Pence became vice president, the news media caught hold of him living by, he lived by, the uh, 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 Billy Graham rule. Anybody know what the Billy Graham rule is? That's where, where you don't, you're not alone with women. You don't meet with women alone. Uh, you know, if, you know, as a, a married man, he would never put himself in a position to where he was with a woman or in a car, in a meeting, uh, by himself. That, that, that's, that's something that was established in the 40s by the Billy Graham Evangelistic Association to keep all of their partners in, 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 in a place above any suspicion or any uh, allegation or accusation. And it was more than just being with women. It was had to involve their money and, and all sorts of other That to avoid even the appearance of evil. That's what the Bible teaches us to do. Mm -hmm. And so the, the, the news media caught hold of that and thought that's the craziest thing they've ever heard. Well, now Jerry Falwell used to get uh, uh, ragged about that as well as Billy Graham, but 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 it's a it's a way for a, a man to uh, first of all avoid even the appearance of evil that nobody could ever bring any accusation against them, and secondly it keeps them out of the area of temptation. Mm -hmm. Wise, makes sense. I've lived by that since I got saved. I, I feel like it honors my wife to never uh, have a relationship with a woman that goes very far at all. Amen. Amen. Okay, that's just me. Well, let me contrast that with something. I read a story about this lawyer who was given the uh, task of hiring a secretary for their law firm. He starts interviewing these women. In comes this woman uh, who is drop-dead gorgeous. She's beautiful. Okay? I mean, hair's just right. Big old eyes. She's batting her eyes. Uh, low cut, you know. Uh, she, she, she's, and she's using her, her best assets, okay, uh, to get this job, and, and she's beautiful. And in this, his, this man's mind, he thought, oh, now, uh, <clears throat> something here, you know, this, this woman is, is too appealing to me. There's something here. This is, this, you know, uh, but he over, you know, he, he ignores that 
And, and he keeps on. And, and, and he, after the interview, he's thinking, well, she really isn't as qualified near as these other people. But then he began to rationalize. Oh, she's so beautiful. She's so pretty. Uh, she'll represent the firm very well. As people come in, the, the, this is what, you know, this is the face of our law firm. And so uh, uh, he just began to overcome, uh, you know, or, or, or just, just go by all the various red flags that were going on. So he hires this woman. And so he hires this woman, and, and, and they're talking a lot as, they, as he walks through, and then pretty soon they're in the break room talking by themselves, and then uh, they're, uh, you know, on the, they're having phone conversations, and, and then she needs a ride to work, uh, I mean to, to home, so he takes her home, okay? And it goes on and on, and, and then he's spending way too many hours uh, uh, shopping for the bouquet and the gift for her on Secretary's Day. Say a lot. Okay, and, and it just, you know, it eventually ends in them having an affair and him losing everything, his marriage, his family, his job. Now, who was wiser? Dude. Who was wiser? I think Mike Pence would have been much wiser than this man was. Mm -hmm. This man was wise. He prepared. You know, no uh, couple... A, a Christian couple coming together and getting married says, well, uh, we're going to get married, but we're going to get divorced eventually. You know, no Christian is going to say, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, I'm okay with drinking, so I'm going to drink here and there, and then, then uh, but, you know, I know eventually I'm going to get a DUI. They're not going to plan on that, are they? See, what you've got to do is make a plan to not have an affair. You've got to plan to not fall victim to uh, uh Alcohol or drugs or or uh, lust or any of these other things. Does that makes sense to you. See, here's what we want to do. We want to draw a line. Here's what's right. Here's what's wrong. So we kind of focus on what's wrong. Okay. So what would be wrong? Okay. Let's just take alcohol. If you drink, that's fine. You know, whatever. But but let's draw a line here. I want to make a point to you about that. Okay. Let me draw a line. Is it okay to drink? Well, a lot of folks say, well, the Bible does not expressly forbid drinking alcohol. Okay. Not going to argue with you about that. All right. All right. So drinking is okay because it's not wrong. Drinking's not wrong. So we're okay with it now because it's not wrong. So I can drink because it's not wrong. Okay, y'all got that? Mm -hmm. That gives us a permission then to drink. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, what we do know, what is wrong, is getting drunk. The Bible tells us over and over and over again about the dangers of drunkenness. Paul just told us don't be drunk with wine. So that's pretty clear to me. So you're not supposed to get drunk. So we've got to put that over in the wrong category, don't we? All right. Now, so here's what happens. We're okay. It's permissible because it's not wrong to drink, but I can't get drunk. But uh, listen, listen, how often does people just drink one? I mean, they make them, they, they sell them in six packs, the last I checked. That's right. Okay? Uh, and, and, and listen, the minute you hit that buzz, say a lot. The minute you hit that buzz, all right. Now, you're not thinking right because you've come under the influence of that alcohol. That's what Paul's warning it against. You come under the influence of that alcohol. Well, that, that glass of wine was good. I'm going to have me another glass of wine. That beer was pretty good. I'm going to have me another beer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. My buddy that I'm having a drink with, he's having another one. I'm going to have me another. What do you call them? Daiquiri. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then eventually, you know, the, uh, uh, of the two, three, and then pretty soon, well, you know, this old guy, he just has a beer. You know, I ain't nothing wrong with a beer. The Bible don't say I can't have a beer, but he drinks two, and then he drinks three, and then he's in an argument with his wife, and pretty soon his marriage is messed up, and, and, and then he gets out, he, he goes off drinking with his uh, buddies, he's just going to have a drink, winds up having more than he should, he gets a DUI. Y'all follow me? Yeah. So here's the thing. We shouldn't be asking, is it wrong? We should be asking, is this wise? Is this wise? Does that make sense? We, we need wisdom. Wisdom. Amen? We need, a, we need a plan. And some of us, we need to be, we need to be real about, uh, we need to be real about our lives. Okay? And, and so there's some things here I want to, uh, I want to talk to you about here to help us with this, to have a plan, okay? 
Listen, when it comes to temptation, you've got to think about it. What, what happened the last time that I fell to this temptation? What was the results? Okay? Uh, 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 when am I most susceptible to this? What, 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 you know, uh, who am I around when I seem to keep doing this? How, how will this affect my future if I do this? I mean, I know pastors right now from Delane. I could name several pastors in Delane. I know had very big, thriving churches, ministries that were going well and threw it all away with their families, everything, for an affair. I can mark off two or three big churches in Delane. That's been the result. Well, uh, you know, obviously they didn't plan. And they weren't wise. Amen? And so we've got to be careful. Uh, uh, you know, I don't want to throw my future away. I don't want to throw my family away. Okay, three things here. We're going, we're going to wrap this up. Three things that we read that, that Paul talks to us about. First of all, he says, redeem the time for the days are evil. We're living in an evil day. So you need to think about this. My day, when you wake up, I have my day here. Now, this world you and I live in is not neutral and doesn't care if you live righteously or not. Matter of fact, you live in a world that will suck you in to unrighteousness and uncleanness in a second. So we live in an evil day, an evil world. My day is filled with things that could hurt me and mess me up if I ain't careful. So I got to be wise. Remember, that's the key wisdom. All right, so what I've got to do here, number one, redeem the time. All right, so you only got so many hours in the day. Now, we all have responsibilities. We all have to work. We all have to sleep. We've got young ones to take care of, maybe. We've got this responsibility, that responsibility. We have a lot of things going on in our life. But one thing you need to do is make sure that you put your spiritual health, your relationship with God, you need to, you need to put something in your day that, that, that helps that to grow. Remember I've told y'all about the, uh, the, the businessman that was, he's a very successful businessman. He's invited to a, uh, a, a school where there's a bunch of business uh, students there and they just tell him, you know, whatever you think's most important to tell these kids, have at it. And so when the kids, uh, these students get there, uh, there's a desk up there, of course, and there's this big glass jar on these big ones, okay, sitting there. And there's a bucket and it's got these great big rocks so the guy uh, uh, says, okay, you know, uh, uh, I'm going to take these rocks here. I'm going to put as many of these rocks into this jar as I can. So he starts putting these big old rocks in this jar. He can get about six, seven uh, rocks into this jar. And so he says, all right, uh, is this jar full? And they said, yeah, yeah, I don't think you can put no more of them rocks in And he says, well, wait a minute. And he pulls out a bucket full of gravel. So he starts pouring this gravel into this jar. So he's, he's able to get quite a bit uh, of gravel into this jar yet. So he says, all right, is it full? Well, they're catching on now. No, it's probably not full. So he pulls out a bucket of sand. Now he pours sand in there, and he gets a lot of sand in there. And he says, do you think it's full now? And they say, well, we, we, we know it's a trick question. No, it's not. So he pulls out a bucket of water. Pours that in there. He gets a bunch of water in there. He says, now it is full. Now, what do you think the point is? So they're talking in there. They're, you know, they're, they're trying to cipher it out, you know, what he's trying to tell them. And they say, well, probably what you're telling us is there's more we can always do. There's more things we need to be doing. We need to, we need to put more stuff into our lives. And he says, no, no, that's not it. He says, uh, my, the, the object of this is, is very, very simple. Put the big rocks in first. His point was, you got to prioritize. Yes, sir. you got to put the important things into your life first. And you and I need to do that too. If you just, if you just go off living life, and, and well, I'll find some time for the Lord here a little later on, guess what? The devil's going to make sure your life is so crowded and so busy, and you're going to have so much going on, you're not going to be able to find time for God. What you have to do is redeem the time. And by that, I think the best way to say it is you need to make time for God. Have an appointment with God and keep it. Amen. 
So you need to build something into your life where you're, listen, you, how, how did David say that a man, a young man, would cleanse his way? By taking heed to the Word of God. Psalm 119 and verse 9. In verse 11 he says, Your word I have hid in my heart that I might not sin against you. Amen. He, he, he hid the Word. You need some Word, y'all. You need lots of Word. You need constant reminders of the truth. Amen. The devil wants to keep you away from the truth. He wants to keep you away from what the Word of God is for us. His plan, His will, His purposes for us. The devil wants to keep you from that. He'll crowd you out of that. Amen. He will crowd you out of that. He'll, he'll send devils. You know, there's times I'm thinking, well, I'm not in the right frame of mind to, to be reading my Bible right now. Well, that's a lie. That's the flesh. You know, that's just laziness. That's all that is. Okay? Uh, uh, I'm too tired. I'm too sleepy to be praying. That's probably what I need to be. I, I always find that if anything in me says you don't need to read your Bible right now or you don't need to pray right now, even though I've got time to do it, that's, 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 that's a work of the enemy. And that's the time I most need to be doing it. The Holy Spirit does not let you go headlong into sin that He ain't working on you, talking to you, uh, telling you, you ought not, listen, you ought not hire that woman. You ought not be around that woman. You ought not go that way. You know, the proverb says you're better off going the long way than the short way if it's going to take you by the adulteress's house. Yeah. You may have to go over and above and beyond something to get away. Okay? From something. And that'll lead us to the second thing here. I need to move on. And that's don't be foolish. Redeem the time. And don't be foolish. Amen. Don't put yourself. Listen, man, you got if you've got a lust problem, don't go to the beach. <laughs> or at least not the, 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 the populated part there. Okay? Because the women, listen, they're Listen, there's more cotton in the top of an aspirin bottle now than there is in their whole <laughs> swimsuit situation. <laughs> Amen. They don't even cover their behinds no more. I'm just talking the truth. That's why, that's why there's so much uh, juvenile delinquency uh, that the children can't reach up and grab mama's shirt tail anymore. It's too high. <laughs> But you understand what I'm telling you. Man, if you've got a lust problem, you don't need to be going to that part of the beach where all the women are running around in their little... You know, we went one time to one of these springs and I said, i, I got to get out of here. Amen. Not that I was tempted necessarily. I just thought it was indecent. But that's how women would parade themselves around uh, other men and children. And I'm just going, all right. If, I, if that's OG, that's just too bad. I'm old school, all right? Amen. And so uh, you've got to be careful. Don't be a fool. If you if you got a if you got a problem with pornography, maybe you not be, you shouldn't be on the internet. Mm -hmm. Maybe you need to cut that thing off. Yeah, mm -hmm. you know one of the big things now for for a lot of ministers is, is they subscribe to this thing where once a, a week uh, uh, every website you visited gets sent to your wife or to your accountability partner. Mm -hmm. Oh, that would stop a lot of things, wouldn't it? Yeah. There, there's, there's lots of things you can do. If, if you've got a problem uh, with, with alcohol, maybe you ought not be drinking alcohol. Pepsi Cola's pretty good. Yes. <laughs> Sweet tea, you know, the, the house wine of the South. Sweet tea, okay? That's pretty good stuff. Yeah, it's a lot better than some of that alcohol stuff you choked down. Um, anyway, I'm just, I'm just being real here. For me, the, the, uh, the, the most unwise thing I can do is think I can take a drink. Oh, yeah. For my personal experience, okay? Mm -hmm. I know I have to stay away from that kind of stuff, and I thank God I'm delivered. He took the want to out of me, yeah. but I know yeah. that, that I have to be wise. So don't be a fool. Yes. Amen? Don't sit around watching R-rated movies and then wonder why you cuss all the time. Ooh, yeah, heavy revy there, Brother Jesse. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah that's right. Don't be, you know, you, you can't watch... You can't watch the world sin and be entertained by the, by the world sinning. First of all, that ought to be wrong. Number one, you should just know that. But, but, but you, you listen, garbage in. So don't be a fool. Jesus said, you've got to get serious about this thing. He said, if your right eye offends you, pluck it out. You'd be better off going to heaven with one eye than into hell with two. 
What was he saying? Not, not to pluck your eye out. But what he was saying is, you, you need to take this thing seriously. This is a matter of heaven and hell. Is this okay? Alright, so we need guardrails. Where, where do they put a guardrail? Do they put the guardrail right on the edge? No, they move it off. They move it to a safe air, safe place. The guardrail don't run in on the edge of the cliff. They move the guardrail off. You know, this reminds me of the story of the guy that was interviewing, he, wanted, he needed a driver. So he, he, he says, uh, I need a driver, and so I'm going to interview these people. He asked them one question. How far, how, how close can you drive to the edge of a cliff? Well, I thought, oh, well, uh, listen, I can drive two feet off of a, the edge of a cliff. And, and, and then somebody else comes along, they're even more uh, arrogant. I can drive a foot off of the edge, one, six inches from the edge of a cliff. And then a guy comes in and he asks him that question, how close can you drive to the edge of a cliff? And he says, I ain't driving nowhere near the edge of a cliff. He said, you're hired. <laughs> Amen. That, that, ought to be our, that ought to be how careful we are. Okay? If you've got a problem with something, you've got to get serious about it. Amen? And you need to put some guardrails up. Don't go to the beach if you've got a lust problem, man. Don't get on the internet and stay on it if you've got a pornography problem, man. If, if, if you getting drunk is causing you problems, maybe you ought not be drinking. Put some guardrails up. Amen. This Okay? There's all sorts of things. People you may not need. To be. You might need an accountability partner. You might, men, if you've got a pornography problem, or you, you need to probably have somebody in your life that you give permission to once a week to ask you when they, when they see you, hey, have you looked at pornography this week? I know some men that do that. Maybe it could be something else. Maybe it's that gossiping. Maybe, maybe we need a partner that says, hey, have you been gossiping this week? You've got you to have somebody that's close to you. Uh, that you, you entered into some covenant with to do that with, but, but I think that may be something. The last thing is, has this helped anybody? Amen. The last thing here is to be filled with the Spirit. Just very simply put, the Spirit of God is in your life to help you to be an overcomer. The Spirit of God is invested in your life. He's invested. He, 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 you know, Jesus bought you with His shed blood. Okay? And so the Holy Spirit has come to make sure that, that that works out in your life. He's going to guide you. He's going to prompt you. I can guarantee you, anybody in this room right now that sins, you're going to do it over the, the prompting of the Holy Spirit. He's going to be talking, talking to you. He's going to give you the red flag. How many has done something and, and there was something in you told you not to do it, but you did it anyway? For some reason, somebody talked you into it. Uh, maybe there was some other reasons. Uh, and, and you did it and you realized, hey, there was something that told me not to do that. I guarantee it was the Holy Spirit. Absolutely. You know, one time, uh, uh, I, I like a lot of men don't want to ask for directions. Okay? <laughs> and so it took me a long time to even use my phone. They even bought me a cradle eventually. Now, I can I can punch that address in there and put my phone up there and this woman will tell me just how to get there. <laughs> and, I, and I don't know if it's breaking the Billy Graham rule or not, but she's really nice and, and, and turn right at the net, you know, the, you know, and then at 500 feet, turn left, and, and it, she'll take you right where you need to go. Okay? Well, I resisted that for a long time. Well, one time we went to this wedding, and, and so we, we had no idea how to get there. We punched the address in and took us right there. Well, on the way out, I say, well, I've, I've come this way now, I've drove here, I should be able to get right back out. So I didn't use the phone or nothing like that. It's dark. And, 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 and so off I go. And in and, and five minutes, I know I'm lost as a goose in a snowstorm. <laughs> so what I do is I turn the phone thing back on, reverse it, and immediately, you know what she says? Take a U-turn as soon as you safely can. <laughs> I'm going the wrong way. I'm heading away from the way that I ought to go. You have in you a Holy Ghost GPS. Yes, you do. Amen? And there's going to be times you're going to be heading the wrong way and it's she, he, 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 the Holy Ghost is going to say to you, take a U-turn, you're going the wrong way. We need to learn to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit. Listen to what He says. He'll put you on that path of wisdom. 